Hello, welcome to each budget brews. I'm Tim, and tonight I am covering a $500 budget jet beer. But before we get started, please check out our Discord and our Patreon. Links are in the description below. And if you like our content, please hit that like, share, subscribe. It really helps out a lot. Thanks. So, Jet Mirror, also known as Chonky Kitty Wins, is the budgetless version of the deck uh, curated by Comedian. I'll link the list in the description. He top four the tournament with this, uh, actually, uh, a few months back. And looking at the list of just... Naya Stacks is always a good one to cover, and I think this is one of the better ones in this current meta. So my version is obviously going to be slightly different, mostly just because of budget constraints, but a lot of the core plan is still the same. Uh, thankfully, Naya actually budgets pretty is pretty budget friendly, and you can retain a lot of the, the deck's raw power that you can in the budgetless version. Um, it's not quite as speedy, definitely, but when you play decks kind of on a similar tier, like against decks that are kind of similarly powered, the pacing will tend to be pretty similar to each other. So Jetmir uh, is a 5-4 cat demon for a white, a green, a red, and a colorless. And then has three static abilities. Uh, the first one is creatures you control get plus one plus O and have vigilance as long as you control three or more creatures. The second one is they get plus one plus O oh, and trample if you control six creatures. And then uh, the last one is they get plus one plus O oh, and double strike if you control nine or more creatures. Uh, the thing to note with Jetmir is that those three abilities stack. So when you have nine creatures, you get the bonuses for having six or more and for having three or more. So once you have nine creatures, all of your creatures get plus three plus O, oh, double strike, trample, and vigilance. Now, that's not to say that you can't get that last clause. I definitely think it's very easy to get the first one, and I think it's pretty reasonable to get to the second clause because of the way the deck is constructed. So what are the combos of this deck? Well, guess what? This deck doesn't have combos. The combo of this deck is big-ass dudes and beat face, and, a.k.a. you play armies in a can. So what are those armies in a can, you ask? Well... The most obvious is to play a card like Elishnorn, which will just give your creatures plus two plus O oh automatically and reduce your uh, opponent's creatures by minus two minus two. Uh, so that way you just automatically just have like a l much larger board than you would otherwise. Elishnorn Grand Cenobite is a four seven with vigilance for two white five colorless. And then um, other creatures you control get plus two, plus two. And other creature, and then creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus two. So that's a four power and four toughness swing on every creature on the board besides Elishnorn. And that will add up very fast. Especially when you start stacking them with the bonuses from Jetmir. Uh, it is not uncommon to have Elishnorn to play in Jetmir and four other creatures. And then everything to get plus four, plus two, Vigilance and Trample. While your opposing creatures, while your opponent's creatures get minus two, minus two. Like, that's a big, <laughs> big difference. Um, and then um, another one to kind of talk about is Adeline, um, Resplendent Cathar. Adeline's power is star, which is equal to the number of creatures you control, has a toughness of four. It has Vigilance. It's white, white, and one. It's a human knight. And then whenever you attack, for each opponent, you get to create a 1-1 one, one human creature token that's tapped and attacking that player or a planeswalker they control. The first time you go to combat after playing Adeline, you meet the first condition for Jetmir. Automatically. The first time you attack first time you go to combat you will get three two ones with vigilance tapped and attacking not bad and then the next turn you meet the second condition and that will add up very fast so she's a very nice and she, since she's only three mana she can um be played on curve you can play her on three play jet mirror on four and you'll have 
the first, like at minimum, you'll have the first um, claws met, even as people block and kill the uh, one ones the first time around. So that is kind of something to 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 of note. And then next is um, Mael Shield of Argive. This does two things. It kind of protects you as well as is an army and a can. So during your turn, opponents can't cast spells and activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. And then whenever Mael attacks, uh, create X11 colorless soldier art artifact creature tokens, where X is the number of soldiers you control. So on her own, she'll just create one. But quite often, there's if you go through all like a lot of the other creature types. There's quite a few soldiers in this deck. Uh, Dahlia being the most valuable guardian of Thraben to be a, a very notable one. And she'll start, they'll start create, uh, start snowballing into more and more creatures. So again, she she puts a lot of power on board pretty quick. And then once you start like adding on Jetmere's abilities on top of it, your board will get out of control very fast. And then lastly, for the ar army in a can is tender shoot dryad uh so this one's a little bit higher on the curve like i said they're all like there's a lot of kind of hence why the deck was called uh chalky kitty wins uh so tender shoot dryad is a two two for one green four colorless has a send uh what a send means is that whenever you control 10 permanents you get the city's blessing and that ability doesn't go away for the remainder of the game unless somebody has to wait to interact with it which I can't think of any cards that interact with it. You know what? If there is a card that removes the city's blessing that I'm unaware of, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to know it. I definitely know that there isn't anyone that's played. What what that ascension will do is if you have the city's blessing, the sapperlings you control will get plus two plus two as long as tennis you try it is in play and you have the city's blessing. So here's the thing. Tender Shoot Dryad makes a 1-1 Sapperlene at each upkeep. You play the Tender Shoot Dryad, and that's one permanent. Probably assume you at least have some amount of other permanents in play, because you need to have five mana to player. So let's just say you've made your land drops, or you've got a dork out and four lands to play that. So that's, your, you have five, then you have six permanents once you play the Tender Shoot Dryad. And then each upkeep You'll make a 1-1. One, one. So by the time it gets back to you, you've got your 10 permanents. And so this thing puts like 12 power on board every wheel of the table. So by the time you get back to your turn, you have like six creatures in play pretty simply. And you now have jet, two conditions for Jetmere. And now they all get plus four plus two trample and vigilance. So that's essentially how this deck works. Uh, you play these like army of can creatures and then you stack all the abilities with jet mirror and that's kind of how you beat your opponents to death. Now with that, like we're not, we're going to assume that your opponents are going to interact with you with spot removal, bounce spells, counter magic, you know, because you are the permanent base, like interact, like interacting deck. So you're going to have a lot of stuff on board, right? So, what you do is you play a lot of hate bears to kind of help protect it. So like the first couple to kind of note is you're playing the, probably the best hate bear in commander right now, drain of magistrate. That's a human wizard for one white, one colorless. It's a one, three, your opponents can't cast spells other anywhere from other their hand. So no cast from exile, no from graveyard, no from whatever weird zone somebody your your zany friend came up with i don't know uh, that was supposed to be a joke but i think that kind of fell on flat even though i'm the only one in the room i didn't even laugh at it so there you go it, it's just a very well statted hate bear it's it, it it shuts off people's commanders things like that um next uh we have even mind sensor which is a 2-1 flying bird wizard uh with flash so you can kind of respond to your opponents trying to tutor by flashing it in. And then if your opponent would search their library, they only get to search the top four cards. Oftentimes, especially in budget decks, people are relatively limited on what their tutors can get. Uh, more so than in non-budget. 
they might be limited, like, they might only be able to get, like, a certain CMC, only a certain t- card type, things like that. So, restricting them to the top four cards oftentimes will blank those tutors. As well, since it has flying and it has flash, it's very, you can wait, you can hold it till either, you don't have to cast it in your main phase and telegraph that you have it. Now, sure, keeping a white two colorless open every turn, people will probably be suspicious if they're a reasonably savvy magic player. But, you know, still doesn't mean, you know, at bare minimum, you can just play it right before you're on tap step on tap. And now you have an attacker, which is, which is kind of a nice thing with um, a deck like this, being able to save your mana and then interact on the stack like that. Beyond like the Dranath and the Aven, we also have like the Kotli Honor Guard, which is kind of a, is a pretty big effect for this deck because it, it shuts off creature ETB triggers. So the two most notable ones, especially in CDH, are going to be Doxod Extortionist and Thassa's Oracle. So this is a way to interact with those without like playing gotcha cards. And this shuts off all kinds of other stuff. Like it hits like all the random like Rex Sage. Like if you happen to be playing against a Mount Green deck or Gitrog, you know, maybe they'll be playing those kind of stuff. But the big two are going to be are going to be Thassa's Oracle and Dockside. But there are a plethora of other creature ETB triggers that that shuts off. That is... You'll see a couple different versions of this effect in this deck because so one of the things you'll notice with is that the, 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 the shuts off ETB triggers is something that comedian noted as a very effective kind of tool, like access to attack on disrupt your opponents with more so than like playing rule of laws, because those are symmetrical and not that this isn't symmetrical, but you have a lot less ETB triggers that are super important for you to win the game than your opponents. So it, you're, you very much can play under it. Whereas like, if you're playing like an Eidolon of, of blessing where Eidolon of rhetoric, I'm sorry, where you can only, each player can only cast one spell per turn that hinders you from being able to develop your board. So we're really only playing one version of that effect in this build. And that is deafening silence which is um, they can only cast one non-creature spell per turn. And since this deck runs like 45 creatures, we're pretty much not affected by it almost at all, ever. Especially, oftentimes we'll play something before the uh, Deafening Silence, and then we'll play creatures following it. So it really doesn't affect us that much at all. And then... On top of that, we've got some cre- like we also have like creatures to help us protect our board as well. Though the notable ones for that are gonna be Giver of Runes, which is a core cleric. It's a one-two for one white. You tap it, give another target creature you control protection from colorless or color of your choice to end of turn. Mother of Runes, which is a one-one human cleric for one white. Tap target creature you control gains protection from color of your choice. And then lastly. We have Sylvan Safekeeper, which is a 1-1 human wizard for one green. You sack a land to give target creature you control shroud to land of turn. So those three creatures will help us blank opposing removal. That will help us protect our stack pieces because most of our stack pieces attack. So they are susceptible to spot removal like Source of Plowshares, Deadly Rollick, Bounce Spells, stuff like that. Because oftentimes people will try to play those those types of effects to you know to remove the one or two pieces that are negatively affecting them to try to go for a win next we also have some forms of creature and non-creature removal uh one of the notable ones for that is going to be cathar commando uh this is another hate bear with flash it's a 3-1 human soldier so it will pump my elf and help us create more tokens has flash, so we can kind of shoot it in an end step, untap, and then attack with it. And then has an activated ability of pay one, sacrifice, destroy target artifact or enchantment. So this is nice because we can blow up rocks, we can use it to answer underworld breach, and it like kind of works with our game plan of creating, building a wide board, getting those buffs from um, our commander, and then... And, and then still being able to play mana efficiently as well. The next one, uh, after Cathar Commando, 
is going to be is Souls Partition. This one actually has been popping up quite a bit lately. Uh, this one exiles a non-land permanent for one white, one colorless. It's an instant. And then if it's a permanent you control or you own, you can ca you recast it from exile for no hit, for no downside. An opponent can recast theirs as well, but they have to pay an additional two. So a lot of times, like especially if you hit something like somebody's dockside, they just have a hard time having, like it buys you a turn. Like it's not, doesn't get rid of it forever, but gets rid of it enough to buy you time to find another answer or to let the table kind of untap and respect that card. It's good like that. You also have Path to Exile as well is another one. Uh, this will just one white exile target creature. It's an instant. And then they're allowed to search the library for a basic land card and then put it on the battlefield tap. Lastly, the deck carries plenty of like stat static, um, like target targeted hate for the meta. So some good examples of that are rest in peace, which is a white is an enchantment for a white and a colorless. When it enters the battlefield, you exile all cards from all graveyards. And then if a card would be put in a graveyard from anywhere, it gets exiled instead. So that's a replacement effect. So the card never goes to the graveyard. So it doesn't trigger any kind of dies triggers. It doesn't, like, they can't use it, use breach under it. It answers a lot. Then we also get um, Stony Silence, which is another white enchantment for a one white, one colorless. Um, activated abilities of artifacts can't be activated. Uh, so that's really good because it shuts off treasures. It shuts off mana rocks. Um, amongst other things, but those are kind of going to be the big ones. And then lastly, uh, we have Root Maze, which is just a one green enchantment. Uh, artifacts and lands come to play tapped. Doesn't answer everything permanently. Uh, but does, does answer, does buy everything a turn, slows down fetches. Cause a lot of these three and four color decks play a lot of fetch lands and hitting this early before they are able to play their first fetch, playing a tapped fetch land into a tap duel into a tap soul ring will buy you a lot of time. Making Dockside's treasures enter tapped will buy you a lot of time. You'll kind of see that like with these effects, like root maze that, as you start deploying multiple pieces, it will create several layers of hate that are hard for your opponents to get out from under. And then since your clock is so fast due to your commander and the way the deck is constructed that you can close the game out very effectively, very quickly, that they'll have a hard time answering them. And then lastly, just as kind of a redundant piece for Root Maze, since I included it on accident anyway, I wanted to highlight uh, Blind Obedience. So Blind Obedience is artifacts and creatures your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. So this will help clear the way for your blockers. In addition to making Dockside Treasures come into play tapped and Mana Rocks come into play tapped. The other thing, and then it has like this nominal ability where you can also extort. I fear, unless I'm playing a Scepter deck using this, I'm not really using that extort ability very often. But it is there. Sometimes you can gain a little life or finish off the last guy, you know, whatever. Help whittle him down a little bit. But it's mostly here to help clear the way for your attackers and shut off treasures uh, for the most part. Some, some like, various, like, forms of card advantage built into the deck as well. Because, I mean, what deck isn't worth playing that doesn't have good card advantage? Like, now that we have good attackers and we have a good board... We need to leverage that to kind of be able to rebuild and to keep up with our opponents and keep deploying to get that lock down even tighter. Uh, the first one is Winota, Join Air Forces. Uh, she's a 4-4 human warrior for a red, a white, two colorless. Uh, whenever a non-human attacks, uh, you get to look at the top six cards of your library. You may put a human card from among them into play tapped attacking and a, an opponent. And then that, that creature gets indestructible till end of turn. And then you put all the cards that you looked at on the bottom in a random order. So if you have two, like, if you have a Noda and Jetnir out, and let's say just one other creature, there's a pretty good split between human and non-human that 
you pretty much have like a 50 50 chance of having a non-human to help trigger minota and I, again i'm kind of talking on the floor of this deck not even on the ceiling and then that will help you begin to kind of build from there the other thing that's nice is that just by her just throwing them into play she's pressuring your opponent's life totals as well as giving you additional stacks pieces in play so yeah it's it's good card advantage there's a reason why there's a whole deck built around her next is toski so toski is uh can't be countered it's a squirrel um it's a one one green three colorless one one indestructible can't be countered and then it has to attack each combat of fable and then whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player you draw a card so in a deck that wants to build a wide board like this one with all these armies in a can having something that will trigger off each creature that deals damage will put a lot of cards in your hand very quickly and then lastly for card advantage just kind of as an illustration of it we have um, dalsam the pliable pacifist it's a one three with reach for a green a white two colorless has the ability to teleport uh dalsam the pliable pacifist has hexproof unless it's attacking then Whenever a creature you control with reach attacks, you untap it, and then it can't be blocked except by creatures with power greater this combat. Which, okay, sure. And then the last one is, is that whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So that's very similar, very much akin to Timna, where if you deal damage to all three opponents, you draw three cards because it triggers with one or more per opponent. Whereas Toski, well, if you hit with seven creatures, you'll draw seven. This one will top out at how many ever opponents you have, which is generally going to be three. But again, it helps kind of give some amount of evasion to some of your creatures. I don't even think there's really any other creatures with reach in this deck. Uh, but it is a thing. Uh, it's mainly in here for the card draw. Uh, just as another redundant copy. And then... This deck also has like a very large creature tutor suite as well. And the first one I want to talk about, uh, actually, if it kind of kind of flows into one of the big things with this deck is that there's a lot of legendary permanents. I mean, all three of the card advantage cards I just talked about were, are all legendary creatures. So the deck's running Captain Sisse, which is a white, a green, two colorless. It's a two-two. You tap it, search your library for a legend or legendary creature card and just for a legendary permanent or legendary card. It doesn't even have to be a um, creature. It could be a legendary spell too. If you wanted, you get to put it in your hand. So like there's a lot of legendary permanents and creatures in the budget list build and in the budgeted build that I have like, like there's like probably 15 or 20 targets like easily. And then in the budget list build, you get stuff like Gaia's cradle those the channel lands so like Buseju and Odawara and stuff like well not Odawara but Buseju is a good example like that's a legendary card and you go tutor up a disenchant like that's pretty good and then next you get also you got Corda Calling which is nice because the deck kind of gen generally tends to generate a very wide board so you have lots of creatures to convoke with and Corda Calling is triple green and X and has convoke which is you, when you cast the spell, you can tap untapped creatures to pay either colorless mana or reduce the cost of a spell by the color of, like, if you tap a green creature, you can actually reduce the green pips or you can reduce the X. Your choice. And then you search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost extra less and you put it in a play. So you could tap, like, you know, three green creatures and then pay four into the colorless and go get a four drop. Like, it, it's a thing you can do. And then you also get cards like Eldamri's Call, which is just a green and a white. Search your library for a creature, put it in your hand. And then Fauna Shaman, which is a green tap, discard a car, creature card, search your library for a creature, put it in your hand. So there's a lot of ways to tutor up, like, the piece you need by getting rid of the piece you don't. The deck has lots of card draw. The deck builds a wide board real fast, has lots of good heat pieces. And just, it hits hard, <laughs> like real hard. I've played against this list of, uh, this list a few times. 
Um, I haven't played against it with comedian at the head, but I have played against the list a few times and it, it, it impressed me enough to want to make a video about it. Let's put it that way. So, um, again, if you got any questions, you got any comments, just go ahead and leave them in the description, like in the link uh, in the comments or, you know, hit me up on discord or whatever. I'm around. Uh, thanks again. Have a good night. Bye.